this week, the adorable young women who worked themselves to starvation to keep you and your Adidas, Puma, and Gap sportswear decided they weren't going to do it anymore at half a living wage. 60,000 of them walked off their jobs Monday, twice as many on Tuesday. By Wednesday, labor leaders were estimating that 210,000 workers had walked out of 95 factories in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. By Thursday morning, a meeting was set to renegotiate wages. Approximately 346,000 people are employed in the nation's garment sector, making sports shoes and clothes, and the industry is the country's third largest. 90% of Cambodia's garment workers are female, and less than 3% of them ever make it to management. Girls are sent from the provinces to work in the factories by families who can't make ends meet farming. Their income directly supports, according to the UN, 1.6 million of the nation's 14 million people. I won't harangue you with statistics. The fact is, the living wage for factory workers is $91 per month. The minimum wage for factory workers is $55 per month. In July, the Garment Manufacturers Association in Cambodia, or GMAC, agreed to a $6 raise that would go into effect in October and then freeze until 2014. Over 3,000 workers protested. A $6 raise when food costs doubled last year? When 3% of the factories still don't meet minimum wage standards for regular employees? And 30% don't meet state pay standards for casual workers? When the economic recession hit Cambodia in 2008, U.S. orders, which make up over two-thirds of the country's garment exports, dwindled. Of the factories that stayed open, many fired workers, only hiring them back on a casual basis. Many would never see that $61 per month. So over the summer, strikes were threatened and canceled. Union leaders waffled. Chia Moni, whose brother was the president of the Free Trade Union of Workers of the Kingdom of Cambodia before his murder in 2004, and who now heads the org himself, repeated the GMAC's claims that ensuring workers a living wage meant the international business community would no longer support Cambodia's garment sector. But this week, close to two-thirds of the garment industry in Cambodia risked violence and the loss of their jobs to demand a living wage from the American and German big-name companies that want to keep them in poverty. If the international business community can't support Cambodia's garment sector, maybe international young women can.